all right so today we are going to solve few moles questions cal calculations question from paper 2 uh, these are very simple questions and once you get the uh, hold of these questions you can easily solve them right so today we will solve a uh, few of them so that you can get idea that how to solve these kind of questions all right so let's just start with question number one now the first thing is that you need to by, by when you're solving these kind of questions you need to uh, read the question thoroughly because the information which is given in these kind of questions they are linked with each other right so you need to make to connect the dots you need to understand the question thoroughly and once you know that what is happening in the question then you can easily solve it solving is not the difficult part the difficult part is to understand that what is happening what we have to find out what information is giving in the question how to link the information so this is very important right so let's just start with this question now this is basically from uh, october november 2016 uh, paper 21 right so let's start reading the question now they're saying that a 0 0.17 gram sample of a group 14 chloride so we have a group 14 chloride and they have given us the mass that we have 0.17 gram right this is the mass of the group 17 chloride reacted with water to produce an oxide so this group 14 chloride it reacts with water and we get an oxide and hcl so this is equation when xcl4 reacts with an x is an element of group 14 so when xcl4 reacts with water we get xo2 and hcl so let's just call this equation equation one right now the next thing is and they have already written down this here that this is equation one now the next thing is that hcl produced hcl produced the hcl produced in this reaction was absorbed in 100 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide so the hcl which was produced in this equation one this hcl it was reacted with sodium hydroxide and this sodium hydroxide is in excess that means it will remain at the end of the reaction right so we can call this reaction number two that in reaction one the hcl which was produced in reaction one it was reacted with sodium hydroxide in reaction number two okay and then in the third part they're saying that in a titration the unreacted sodium hydroxide obviously as they have already informed us that NaOH that we have used is in excess so it will remain at the end of the reaction so the remaining NaOH the unreacted NaOH you can call it whatever you want the remaining NaOH or the unreacted NaOH solution this required 30 cm cube of 0.2 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid for complete neutralization so this is reaction number three that at the end of reaction number two at the end of the reaction, reaction number two, the NaOH which remains, because NaOH was an axis, so the NaOH which remains at the end of reaction number two, that NaOH will react it with uh, another amount of hydrochloric acid. And they have given us the volume and concentration of that acid for complete neutralization. And this is the end of this uh, whole experiment, right? So initially what you have done, you have reacted a group 14 chloride with water you get xo2 and hcl the hcl produced in this reaction was reacted with some naoh which was in excess we have the volume and concentration of that naoh right and after the end of this reaction number two the naoh which remains it reacted with some more hydrochloric acid and we have the volume and concentration of that acid as well and complete neutralization occurs Right, so this is a three-step reaction, three-step experiment. Now, next thing is now, as now we have completely understand the question that was happening in the question, now we can easily solve it. So let's just start reading the part number A, what we have to do in part A. So they're saying that, calculate the amount in moles of hydrochloric acid used in the titration to neutralize the unreacted sodium hydroxide right we have to calculate the amount in moles 
we have to calculate the amount in moles of hydrochloric acid used in the titration to neutralize the unreacted sodium hydroxide so unreacted sodium hydroxide was this right so to neutralize this unreacted sodium hydroxide which remains from reaction number 2 we used 30 cm cube of 0.2 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid and we have to calculate we need to calculate the moles right so if we know the volume if we know concentration moles can easily be find out by c is equals to n upon v remember just one thing that in these kind of questions you have to show you are working right so concentration is 0 0.20 moles per dm cube number of moles we have to find out and volume is 30 divided by as the volume is in cm cube so we have to convert it in dm cube by dividing with thousand right and then this will multiply with 0.20 and we get the answer that would be 6 into 10 raised to power minus 3 or 0 0.006 so this is the amount of or this is the moles of HCl right what is this this is the moles of HCl moles of HCl that reacted with that reacted with aqueous uh, that reacted with unreacted NaOH from reaction 2 all right so the reaction uh, the NaOH which was uh, which remained at the end of the reaction 2 that will react with uh, acid and the number of moles of acid is 6 into 10 raised to power minus 3 all right so I hope you understand this part of the question now in the next part they're saying write the equation for the write the equation for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide now this is simple part of you can just simply write this in neutralization reaction so hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide we get sodium chloride plus water next calculate the amount in moles Again, we have to calculate uh, amount in moles of NaOH, sodium hydroxide, neutralized in the titration, the titration which was happened in part A, right? In part A, we have calculated the moles of HCl, and now they're saying that calculate the amount of moles of NaOH. So the moles of HCl we have already calculated. The moles of HCl is 6 into 10 raised to power minus 3. Now we can easily tell the moles of NaOH because the molar ratio between HCl and NaOH is 1 ratio 1. We know that moles of HCl and moles of NaOH, the molar ratio between HCl and NaOH is 1 ratio 1. So if we have 6 into 10 raised to power minus 3 moles of HCl, obviously it would react with 6 into 10 raised to power minus 3 moles of NaOH. So amount of moles of NaOH is 6 into 10 raised to power minus 3. All right. Now in the next part, calculate the amount in moles. Again, we have to calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide that reacted with the HCl produced by the reaction in equation 1. Right. In the previous part, you have calculated the moles, but these were the moles that remains at the end of reaction 2. Now, what they are saying that calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide, calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide that reacted with HCl produced by the reaction in equation 1. So, this was the HCl produced in reaction 1. And we have to calculate that uh, what moles of NaOH reacted with this HCl, right? So they had given us the volume and concentration of NaOH. This was in axis. And we know what moles remains at the end of this experiment too. We have just calculated it. This was 6 into 10 raised to power minus 3. So let's just calculate what we had in the starting. This The moles of this axis NaOH. Right? We have volume and concentration. So the volume is 100 cm cube and concentration is 0.1. So, C is equals to N upon V. Concentration is 0 0.1. Number of moles X, volume 100 divided by 1000. Alright, 0.100. So, we can just simply calculate the 
number of moles that we had in the starting 100 divided by 1000 multiply by 0.1 so this would be 0 0.01 so initially the excess NaOH this was 0 0.01 now what is this 0 0.01 this is the moles of excess NaOH Right, this is the moles of any excess NaOH that we had in the starting. Now, the moles of NaOH that remains after this reaction, this was excess NaOH. Now, this excess NaOH reacts with HCl produced in reaction one, and then whatever remains at the end, this reacts with the HCl, and we have already calculated the moles of HCl that remains after reaction two. That was six into ten raised to power minus three. And we have to calculate what moles of NaOH reacts with HCl produced in reaction 1. So this is the starting moles of NaOH. And if we just simply subtract the moles that remains after reaction 2. This was 6 into 10 raised to power minus 3. So this would tell us that what moles of NaOH reacted with the HCl produced in reaction 1. So that would be 4 into 10 raised to power minus 3. So I hope you are getting this thing that these are the moles which we have in the starting these are the moles which we have in the starting these are the moles like uh, these are the moles we have in the starting when HCl produced in reaction 1 and these are the moles which left moles of NaOH left after reaction 2 right so they are asking that what moles of NaOH are reacting in reaction 2 right so this is the starting moles this is what left after reaction 2 so if we can just simply subtract the starting moles from what is left we can get what reacted in reaction 2 so this is the moles of NaOH 4 into 10 raised to power minus 3 which reacted with HCl produced in reaction 1 right moles of moles of NaOH that reacted with HCl produced in 1. Now, in the next part, they are saying calculate the amount in moles of HCl produced by the reaction in equation 1. Moles of HCl that produced in reaction 1. So, we know that uh, 4 into 10 raised to power minus 3 moles of NaOH reacted with HCl produced in reaction 1. We have just calculated it in the previous part. And we know the ratio between HCl and NaOH. So if NaOH reacted with HCl is 4 into 10 raised to power minus 3. So obviously moles of HCl and moles of NaOH it is in 1 ratio 1. So moles of HCl would also be 4 into 10 raised to power minus 3. So the moles of HCl which produced in reaction 1 from this reaction. This is 4 into 10 raised to power minus 3. Right now we know the moles of HCl which was produced in reaction 1. Now in the next part calculate the amount in moles of XCl4 in the original 0.17 gram sample. Right we have to calculate the moles of XCl4 and as we know the moles of HCl and we have this equation we can easily calculate the moles of XCl4 by molar ratio. So what is the molar ratio of XCl4 and HCl? 1 ratio 4. Here we have 1 mole and here we have 4 moles. So we know this thing that the molar ratio between XCl4 and HCl is 1 ratio 4. So if we have 4 into 10 raised to power minus 3 moles of HCl then what would be the moles of XCl4 so by just simply cross multiplying this would be 4 into 10 raised to power minus 3 divided by 4 that would be 0 0.001 or 1 into 10 raised to power minus 3 because whatever the moles of HCl the moles of XCl4 would be one fourth of it so it is 1 into 10 raised to power minus 3. Alright, so now we have moles of XCl4. And we they already have given us the mass of this XCl4. So that means now we have the mass and moles related to it. So this is 1 into 10 raised to power minus 3 moles of XCl4. 
and the mass of these moles is 0 0.17 grams this is already given in the question and they are saying calculate the molecular mass of XCL4 right so you can just simply relate them or you can use the formula that mole is equals to given mass upon molar mass so moles that we have calculated in the last part is 1 into 10 raised to power minus 3 mass is already given in the question 0 0.17 divided by mr we have to calculate so it would be 0.17 divided by 1 into 10 raised to power minus 3 0.17 divided by point 1 into 10 raised to power minus 3 so that is 170 so the mr of this chloride of group 14 is 170 right and the last part is calculate the relative atomic mass of x we have to calculate the relative atomic mass of x and suggest its identity so the mr of xcl4 is 170 and we know that cl the atomic mass of cl is 35.5 multiply by 4 that is equals to 170 so 35.5 multiply by 4 that is 142 so x is equals to 170 minus 142 that would be 28 so relative atomic mass of x is 28 and if you look in the periodic table this is silicon because the atomic mass of silicon is silicon belongs to group 14 and its atomic mass is 28 so the element here is silicon identity of x is silicon.